Hello everyone and welcome to tonight's candlelight vigil. My name is Jess Hill. I'd like to begin tonight by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we're meeting on and pay my respects to Elders past and present and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us tonight. Sovereignty was never ceded. I'd also like to acknowledge the women and children who have been killed by someone they once loved and trusted and those who continue to live with the trauma of domestic abuse and family violence. It is for them that we are all here tonight. This evening, we're gathering to remember the many women and children who have been killed. We join together to light candles in memory of all those who have been subjected to domestic abuse and family violence. Around Melbourne tonight, and in regions across Victoria, buildings and landmarks are lighting up in purple illuminated in memory of the lives that have been lost to family violence. If you're participating in tonight's vigil, please take a moment just to share an image of whatever you're doing on whichever social media you prefer with the hashtags NDV and Light a Candle 2021. Tonight, we welcome and stand in solidarity with victim survivors who will share their messages of loss and grief, but also their determination to end family violence. We'll hear from people who are working to prevent abuse and violence, to improve safety and support women and children to heal and regain their lives. We know we need to change. Our society is not working. Domestic and family violence is not something that happens to other people. It's not a niche issue. It affects each of us in ways that are seen and unseen. I'll now hand over to Auntie Diane Kerr to welcome us to country and then we will hear from victim survivors, their families, friends, advocates and allies on why we light a candle tonight. I honour my ancestors and my elders and I pay homage to the sacred ground that we're all on. I wish to acknowledge any elders, elders of different nations, any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, any First Nations peoples from across the waters, and I acknowledge you all and I pay my respects to your ancestors, elders and families. We are all here today, or well, this evening really, to pay homage to survivors, people that haven't survived and victims of domestic violence. And it is a shame that we have a country that still has a lot of this happening, particularly to women I know that we have some to men as well, but we've even lost women in the last couple of weeks and in violent ways. And I am so, so sad that this is happening. Families are being destroyed. Communities are in uproar. Children are sad for their parents. They lose both parents and it's devastating to all of us. So I'm standing in solidarity with you all and I hope that we can work together to eradicate this stigma that happens in our communities and I only hope that we can stand tall and stand together and stop this violence. Please speak out, please don't be silent anymore, we need to get rid of this. May Bunjil, my creator, surround you all and give you strength and resilience. Woman Jika. Warren Jerry Ballot, Yuman Gundi Big. Welcome to the Wurundjeri country. Nungodjin. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Di, for your beautiful welcome to country and for sharing your wisdom and your insights with us. Dispossession and colonisation has brought two centuries of trauma to First Nations people, and family violence is widespread across Australia. We see too many deaths, injuries, trauma and we must help each other break the silence that protects perpetrators and endangers us all. Through their great grief and loss, many survivors, family members and friends have found a way to tell their stories and share their voices. Their powerful advocacy and their words and actions are quite literally changing the world. Thank you, Jess. Um, I am here with you all tonight to share a little bit about my own journey. Um, it's been six years now since I left um, 
an abusive relationship and at that time I had spent half a decade living and loving, living with and loving a man um, that I should have been able to trust and instead by the time I left I, um, I was physically bruised, I was financially broke and I guess um, the way in which I had been emotionally abused had really broken my heart and the way in which I had been psychologically abused had really destroyed my brain and the way that I um, thought and yeah I just had exited that relationship in a way in which I felt um, broken and I wasn't sure that I would be able to put myself back together again and I guess when I reflect on that on one hand I just feel so grateful and so lucky to be alive and to be here with you tonight to share my story um, and on the other hand I know that the way in which I experienced um, that relationship and um, was abused changed me and I can't go back to being who I was before all of that and um, sometimes I wish that I could and that I could have the carefree life that I was meant to have um, but I can't and it, and it has changed me and I guess when I think about that as well um, there is so much that my perpetrator stole from me and took away from me in my life but he also has left me with something um, and that is an absolute dedication to changing things and helping other people and he has not been able to take away my hope and my hope is for a future where every single person in our country can live free from all forms of family violence and I truly believe in that future and I feel like if you are listening tonight to what I have to say that I don't need your pity or your sorrow but I do need you to match my enthusiasm and my hope and my drive to achieve that vision where every single person in our country can live free from family violence. Thank you. On the 7th of June, 1987, I celebrated my 200th game with Coburg here with my sister, Vicky Cleary, at the Coburg football ground. 11 weeks later, Vicky was fatally stabbed multiple times by her ex-boyfriend outside the kindergarten where she worked, one kilometre from this ground. A cherished daughter to Ron and Lorna Cleary and a beloved and inspiring sister and auntie. At 25 years of age, Vicky had a rich life ahead of her. 33 years later, we still miss the joy and love she brought to our lives. When Vicky was born on the 9th of October, 1961, Grandmother Gladys wrote a poignant letter to our mother. In the letter, she said that in giving birth to a girl, after four boys, our mother had been rewarded for her goodness. Our mother and our sister Vicky were like two peas in a pod. The pain of Vicky's death, compounded by the manslaughter verdict, handed down to her killer under the old provocation law, took a heavy toll on our family. We've come a long way since violent men exploited the provocation law to blame the women they killed. But unfortunately, the murders roll on. It's a national scandal that one woman a week in Australia is murdered by a man with whom she's had a relationship. At tonight's Safe Steps Vigil, I say to the women and children taken, you are our inspiration 
in the campaign to end the misogyny and the violence stalking women. I say to the women and children we've lost, we remember and love you. My whole world changed forever. I knew nothing about family violence. My daughter Adriana and her boyfriend had been high school sweethearts. They'd met as teenagers and over the years it seemed to be that typical on and off relationship. We thought he tried to control her behaviour and made her feel guilty and miserable. Adriana stood up for herself and finally ended the relationship for good. She went to university to study science. She travelled. She was having fun with her family and friends. She was a nature lover, a free spirit, and her life was taking off. But he couldn't accept her decision and he would follow her, stalk her, and ask mutual friends about her. He had never been physically violent, but he contacted her many times, threatening suicide. There was finally little contact, and we thought it was over, and Adriana could get on with her life. But it wasn't. For three months, he was making a plan to kill her. He searched the internet, how to kill and how to climb a wall. It was as if he decided if he couldn't have her, nobody else could. He told his friends he was going to murder Adriana and even showed them the knife. They didn't seem to believe him. They seemed to want to protect him. They said nothing to the police or Adriana. He told his psychologist that he wanted to harm someone, but she did nothing about it. Many people knew, but nobody warned Adriana. If somebody had told Adriana or the police, she would still be alive today. He was found guilty and sentenced to 19 years and will be out of prison in maybe six years. When he gets out, he'll still have a life. My daughter doesn't have a life. I'll never see her again. We're all missing out on the future we would have had together. And when there is another murder of a woman by her partner or ex-partner, I ask myself, when is this ever going to stop? When are men going to stop hurting women? We're a progressive society and yet women are still being killed. I have to keep living for Adriana and the women who have lost. We have to fight these statistics are so high. I'm now working to help young people understand consent, what healthy relationships look like and that all forms of control are abuse. With will and determination, we can eliminate family violence. We are lighting a candle for my daughter Nikita, who was murdered on 9th January 2015, and for all women who have lost their lives to men's violence. Nikita was a shining star. 
a loving and beloved daughter, sister, cousin, and friend. She dreamt of one day sharing her passion for dance and choreography with the world. Our hope is that all men take responsibility for being part of the solution and work towards zero tolerance for disrespectful, abusive, and violent behavior towards women and their children. The pain and loss that my family and I go through every day since Nikki's passing and the pain we feel when another woman or child loses their life to men's violence is something we would not wish upon anyone. Our plea is that we not only remember and sympathize with victim survivors today by lighting a candle, but that we work towards bringing about the cultural change to end this scourge of violence against women. Thank you, Geraldine, Phil, Grace, Tarang and Samila for sharing your stories, what you have all lived through, the expertise you have developed, your determined vigilance. It is truly awe-inspiring. We've received so many touching messages and reflections from the thousands of people who are joining in candlelight vigils tonight. Here are just some of those reflections. This evening, we're in mourning, remembering the devastating loss of so many women and children to family violence. We must do everything in our power to end this trauma. Tonight, I'm lighting a candle to remember those who have lost their lives to family violence. I'm lighting a candle in support of everyone in our community who lives with the trauma of family violence every day. For you, I pledge to maintain the Victorian government's commitment to end family violence in this state for good. Every family violence death is one too many. Every grieving family, every traumatised child, it's entirely preventable. We've made great progress, but we still have a long way to go. It's not easy and it won't be quick, but we will not rest until we have a Victoria free from violence. I'm lighting a candle tonight because I want to honour the women who have become disabled because of family violence and the women with disabilities who have experienced family violence. It's my hope that we can all work together to make sure that the experiences of women with disabilities in family violence become more visible and we can work together as a community to make sure that their voices are heard in bringing about change. In our collective anger and our grief, we need to say enough and we need to acknowledge that this violence is not inevitable and in fact preventable. Our work in prevention, of course, is done in solidarity with victim survivors and it's done especially for those who are not with us today. Our work is dedicated to them. Jua vita vya nyumbani. Tungependa kuwajulisha. Kuna msaada. Ufikie. Ya hachu, shtobe vse ženšine i djeti žili v bezapasnosti. Žili svobodne, polnacenne žiznju, bez semijnovo nasilje. I'm lighting a candle to celebrate the strengths of victim survivors everywhere. Thank you for speaking out, for reporting and defending women's rights and all human rights. Non spegnere la candela mai. Per favore, connettiti a coloro che possono aiutarti. When my children experienced family violence, I felt I had failed. They have become beautiful, empathic adults. I did not fail. Man in kara mikunam, ke khanuma hada aman bashan, Tonight, I'm lighting a candle to remember every Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander woman who has died because of family violence. In lighting this candle, Jira sends a message of strength, of hope and profound respect to all women. Lighting one candle is not enough though to symbolise and acknowledge the ongoing and calculated historical injustices inflicted on our people. There is a candle especially for our kids, those who are taken from their families, separated from their mums, deprived of their culture because of family violence. 
I light not just one candle, but many tonight, in hope that they will shine a bright light on the strength, courage and resilience of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. Tonight we pause and remember the women and children we've lost to family violence. We also acknowledge that behind each death, behind each tragedy, there are families and communities, a network of grief that extends across our state. Many of you watching the vigil will have experienced that unthinkable loss. Tonight, we stand in solidarity with you, with every single victim survivor. Together, we recommit ourselves to a safer state for all women and children, a Victoria free from violence. It's really important that we remember every woman and child who have lost their lives tragically to family violence. We hope that any men watching this or listening to this will recognise that they need to take some steps. We're here with trained staff seven days a week on 1300 766 491, ready to take that call to support people to stop making a choice to use violence. Today at Switchboard, we stand in solidarity with all lives lost to family violence. And we know that gendered violence affects us all. We also remember today all the LGBTIQA plus lives lost to family violence, all those killed by family violence. In particular, we think of our sister girls and brother boys and our trans women of colour and transgender women who are often their deaths at the hands of family violence, at the hands of intimate partner violence, go unreported in the count of those killed by family violence. Dirake mushuma utuko wa umothe, ni udwa atumia na shia na shiao, ara matete mio yu ni udwa abara shia mishi. Hena muihoko, edho teithio. Vtim vieku, vtim roku, vtim chasie, mężczyźni muszą szanować kobiety. Mam nadzieję, że wszystkie kobiety i dzieci są bezpieczne i mogą żyć pełne życie, wolne od przemocy rodzinnej. Even when my family were disbelieving, I knew what he was doing to me was wrong. I knew it in my heart. I light a candle for her and for every other woman who has stepped forward with courage to speak her truth. Espero que ninguna mujer vive con miedo. Razmišljam o mnogo žena koje su umrle. Razmišljam o bolu njihove dece, njihovih porodica i našega društva. Večeras palim svijeću za žene i djecu koje smo izgubili i za one koji su povrijeđeni uslijed porodičnog nasilja. Niste zaboravljeni. I remember the women and children who have lost their lives as a result of this violence. I recognise that violence within families occurs across cultures, communities and backgrounds. Every single one of us deserves to feel safe. For those who have been here for 65,000 years, to those who have only recently started living in Australia and everyone in between. Tonight, we pause to remember those whose lives have been lost to family violence. These are the tragedies we work hard to prevent. Every day there are family members contemplating leaving their homes because they are not safe. If that person is you, please know that we are here to help you leave safely, with dignity and to be part of the people and services that will support you through this life-changing decision. We know that staying is just as difficult, just as frightening and potentially the only thing that can be done right now. We are here to respect your choices. Trust us to always be there as an option and help make that decision a little easier. Tonight I join Safe Steps and all of you in lighting a candle in remembrance of the women and children who have lost their lives to domestic and family violence. At Our Watch, we work to embed gender equality and to prevent violence across every aspect of our life. As we do that work, we remain ever conscious of women whose lives have already been taken our thoughts are with the victims, victim survivors, their families and friends, this evening and always. We shine a remembrance today and every day on the tragic loss of our beautiful mother, Teresa Mancuso. 
We miss you every day and we'll never forget the warmth and unconditional love you have provided us. We live life through your legacy and we'll forever be the voice you never had to break the silence on domestic violence. We miss you, Mum. Love you always. As we struggle with the collective grief of remembering all the women and children's lives that have been ended as a result of male violence, I'm reminded of all the times my perpetrators threatened my life. Thankfully, I escaped and I survived. However, unfortunately, my daughter Brianna May did not, and she died as a result of my abuser's actions. My deepest wish is that no more lives will get cut short as a result of family violence. Hoy, recordamos las preciosas vidas que han muerto en las manos de la violencia doméstica. No estás sola. No es tu culpa. 家庭暴力夺去宝贵嘅生命，咁样对受害人嚟讲系咪公平呢？今日我悼念逝去嘅生命。如果你遭遇家庭暴力，请你打一八零零七三七。七三二，我哋一定会支持你。不知可，可能那些女奴隶，他们没有，我不知道他们有没有。如果你害怕在家里，不知可，让你们一个人。不要担心，我们不存在帮助你。In the world, a woman is killed at the hands of someone she knows every minute. Of every hour, of every day, of every month, of every year. Time to take action. Time to support women's escape, survival, and healing. Under Tedak Sendiri. Today, I want to pay my respects and acknowledge all those Aboriginal women who have lost their lives to family violence. Our Aboriginal women are really critical to the survival of our peoples. When we lose our Aboriginal women, we lose the future mothers of our generations of our peoples. We lose our stories. We lead us lose our custodians of our knowledge. We use the nurturers of our children. So today, I encourage family and friends to join us in standing up and acknowledging those that we have lost, acknowledging the grief and loss that's in our communities. But also support us in stamping out family violence. Thank you. Family violence has a devastating impact on our community and on human beings. Every night, Safe Steps is having to find accommodation, safe accommodation, for up to 100 women and their children. This is simply unacceptable. What's worse is that every week a woman is dying in Australia due to family violence. I am involved in this vigil. I am supporting these efforts to bring attention to this issue that must be addressed, but importantly, to also remember the many women, children, and families that are impacted by family violence. Tonight, I'm lighting this candle to remember all the women and children who have lost their lives to family violence. My hope for the future is that our continued efforts will ensure that no lives are lost and that all women and children are safe to live their lives without fear. I'm lighting a candle for women who are prisoners in their own homes. May you be free. Anavo ena keri yat inasfalia ke prostasia o lonto gine kon ke to pevion ke yat in prolipsi ti se ko yenia kis vias. I think of all the women and children who have been killed. I think of those now feeling so alone in their pain. Please reach out. There is a community ready to support you. You are not alone. ഗാഹിക പീഡനം മൂലം ജീവൻ നഷ്ടപ്പെട്ടവരും മുറിവേറ്റവരുമായ എല്ലാ സഹോദരിമാരെയും കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളെയും ഈ നിമിഷം ഞാൻ ഓർക്കുന്നു
ni nyart ke kurla kela er ska a kela a waran nadini This past year has presented unprecedented and devastating challenges for people experiencing family violence and the services supporting them. The pandemic has led to a rise in family violence reporting, including more people experiencing this abuse for the first time and perpetrators using more severe tactics of violence and control. We honour the lives lost to family violence with our ongoing determination to build a future free from violence for all. Tonight, I remember all victim survivors of family violence and honour all those who have lost their lives to family violence. Family violence, sexual violence, all forms of violence against women and children is the global pandemic we've been aiming to prevent for decades. If you believe, like I do, that we can end family violence in our lifetimes, join us to create a movement for change to achieve our vision of a Victoria free from violence for good. Women with disabilities experience higher rates of family violence, yet we face more barriers to family violence services. Safe Steps is the home to the Disability Family Violence Crisis Response Fund. This fund can pay for disability-based costs in a crisis timeframe. This is such an important way to support us. I'm lighting a candle to remember all those who have died as a result of family violence. My hope is to raise awareness about the importance of healthy relationships. I'm thinking of and feeling for all victim survivors of family violence and their loved ones and supports at this time. I hope that you can move forward as best as possible in your life with the right support. And I also hope that through efforts such as increasing respect and greater understanding of diversity, that we prevent having more victims of family violence in the future. And I say that for all, but for someone like myself, I also think of people who are part of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, intersex, queer, and asexual, aromantic communities. Take care, please remember to respect with each other and come from a place of kindness wherever possible. Thank you for these reflections and messages sharing our grief and our loss, our collective determination to end this national emergency, to end this national crisis of abuse and oppression. Thank you for joining us all tonight. We're grateful we've been able to gather to remember, to mourn and to pay our respects to those who are no longer with us and to support those whose lives are forever changed. To end the vigil, let's share a minute's silence together and we'll finish with music to comfort and galvanise us to say, never forgotten, no more. We must end domestic abuse. We must end family violence. I am woman, hear me roar In numbers too big to ignore And I know too much to go back and pretend Cause I've heard it all before 
I've been down there on that floor No one's ever gonna keep me down again Oh yes, I am wise But it's which I'm born from pain And yes, I paid the price But look how much I've gained If I have to, I can do anything I am strong I am invincible I am a woman I am a woman, watch me go See me standing toe to toe As I spread my loving arms across the land But I'm still an embryo Got a long, long way to go Until I make my brother understand Oh yes, I am wise but it's wisdom born of pain And yes, I've paid the price But look how much I've gained If I have to, I can do anything I am strong, mm -hmm. I am invincible I am woman I am woman I am a